Hi friends, in this video we are going to see beta and gamma functions. So first one is beta function. First of all it is denoted by capital B of m comma n. The integral integration from 0 to 1 x raised to m minus 1 into 1 minus x raised to n minus 1 dx where this m and n are positive numbers is known as beta function. So this is so the integral 0 to 1 x raised to m minus 1 1 minus x raised to n minus 1 is called as beta of mn. This is also called as Euler's integral. Euler's integral of first kind. Okay. So the next function is gamma function. So gamma function is denoted by this symbol. So the integral integration from 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n minus 1 dx where this n is a positive number then this integral is called as gamma function. This n should be positive number. So first we will see some properties of gamma functions. So the first property is gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to n into gamma n. So we will prove this. So first of all by definition gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n dx. So we have simply replaced this n by n plus 1. So by replacing n by n plus 1 this will become n plus 1 minus 1 and then this 1 will get cancelled. So gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n dx. Now we will solve this by by parts rule. So integrating by parts we will get x raised to n as it is integration of e raised to minus x that is minus of e raised to minus x limits from 0 to infinity minus integration of derivative of x raised to n that is n into x raised to n minus 1 into integration of e raised to minus x that is minus e raised to minus x limits from 0 to infinity. Now if we put the upper limit in the first term that is infinity we will it, uh, it will becomes e raised to minus infinity and that is 0 minus if we put the lower limit 0 we will, it will becomes 0 raised to n that is 0. So the first first part will become vanish. So we will get here 0 and from second term this minus sign and this minus sign it will, it will become plus and the and we take the constant term n outside. So this will become n into integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n minus 1 dx and again by definition of gamma function this is equal to gamma of n. So thus gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to n gamma n. Similarly gamma of n this is equal to n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 and gamma of n minus 1 this is equal to n minus 2 gamma n minus 2. So we can write gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to n gamma n again gamma n this is equal to n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 and again gamma n minus 1 this is equal to n minus 2 gamma n minus 2 and so on. The next property is gamma of 1. We will find the find gamma of 1. So by definition this is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to 0. Since we will put we will put 0 sorry we will put uh, 1 in this equation then this will becomes 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to 1 minus 1 that is 0. So we have to simply integrate e raised to minus x from 0 to infinity. Therefore gamma of 1 this is equal to integration 0 to infinity e raised to minus x dx and integration of e raised to minus x is minus e raised to minus x limits from 0 to infinity. 
again if we put the upper limit minus uh, upper limit infinity it will becomes e raised to minus infinity that is 0 minus minus lower limit that is e raised to 0 that is 1 and this is minus 1 so minus of 1 so this will become minus of minus 1 so the answer is 1 so gamma of 1 this is equal to 1 now third one is if n is a positive integer okay if n is positive integer then gamma of n plus 1 this is equals to n factorial so we will use the first property that is gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to n gamma n again gamma n this can be written as n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 again this gamma n minus 1 can be written as n minus 2 gamma n minus 2 okay so we will so we will get n n minus 1 n minus 2 up to so on 3 2 1 gamma 1 and we know that gamma 1 is 1 so we will get n n minus 1 n minus 2 up to and so on 3 into 2 into 1 which is n factorial so thus if n is positive integer then n plus 1 this is equal to n factorial that is gamma of 4 this is equals to 3 factorial that is 6 so next property is gamma of 0 this is equal to infinity we will use this first property that is gamma of n plus 1 this is equal to n into gamma n so this implies that gamma of n this is equal to gamma n plus 1 divided by n okay so gamma of n this is equal to gamma of n plus 1 divided by n so we will put simply n equal to 0 in this term so we will get gamma of 0 this is equal to gamma of 0 plus 1 that is gamma of 1 upon 0 now gamma of 1 is 1 so 1 upon 0 that is infinity so gamma of 0 this is equal to infinity the fifth property is if n is a negative integer then gamma n is infinite so if n is negative integer for example minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on then gamma of that number will be infinity for example if we consider gamma of minus 2 then by using this formula that is gamma of n equal to gamma of n plus 1 upon n then gamma of minus 2 this will become gamma of minus 2 plus 1 upon minus 2 and gamma of minus 2 plus 1 this is gamma of minus 1 again if we put n equal to minus 1 here we will get minus 1 plus 1 that is 0 upon minus 1 so gamma of minus 1 this is equal to gamma of 0 upon minus 1 and we know that gamma of 0 is infinity so thus if n is a negative integer then gamma of n is equal to infinity